This is sort of second example. The second example uh, um, has also uh, been submitted to IEEE transactions on image processing and, and uh, it's under revision, but you can find the archive paper in this very link and the code will be uh, uh, uploaded on this very link, GitHub link as well. Uh, the title of the uh, paper is Changes to Captions, an Attentive Network for Remote Sensing Change Captioning. Um, and and, and uh, in contrast with the previous work where we tried to produce realistic images from text, here we want to produce text from images. But uh, let me uh, provide a bit of introduction in the first place to make sure that we are all on the same page. What is change detection? The process of identifying the differences of the landscape from one dominant feature type to another uh, is regarded as change detection. In simple words, let's imagine that we capture images from exactly the same scene in two different time epochs, time one and time two. And here, we, uh, we, we, as you can see, um, the change areas are highlighted by the, uh, yeah, but by the white color and the background have been classified uh, with the black color. And this is what we do in a binary change uh, detection approach. Change detection plays an important role, uh, uh, play uh, an important role in a variety of applications in the remote sensing community, uh, including, for example, uh, forest degradation, uh, uh, for example, caused by wildfire, for example, urban sprawl or urban development, for example, land degradation, and so on. But what we want to do in change captioning is to describe what has changed in a scene uh, which is useful for a user. So, as I said before, the amount of a multi-modal uh, and multi-temporal data in the remote sensing community uh, are exponentially increasing. So it would be very nice to develop some automatic approaches to, to interpret uh, the, the changes in multi-temporal and time series of data. And this is what we do with change captioning. Here I provided you with two examples. For example, in the first pairs of images, uh, we have one scene captured at a time one and time two. Uh, the result of change captioning should be a text, something like there has been no change between the two images in the first pairs of images. But in the second pairs of images, um, we should have a text description, a text caption like, like two people have moved from the left of the parking lot to the right. And this is the backbone of change captioning. So we want to localize the changes and we want to produce automatic captions for those changes. And of course, change captioning is a particular part of uh, image captioning. But in image captioning, uh, we only have one image and we want to produce text information from images. Uh, one, one of the well-established um, uh, works in the computer vision community is Dual Dynamic Attention mo uh, Model, or DUDOP, which investigates attention mechanism. And with that, uh, uh, the authors wanted to, to uh, capture the most important uh, changes and exclude irrelevant changes, localize them, and produce grammatically uh, correct text description for those changes. Here you can see uh, the proposed method or uh, CHG to cap, change to caption. Well, the proposed method is composed of three parts, the feature extractor, the attentive encoder, and the caption decoder. So first we take uh, images, multi-temporal images, or image one and image two, and we pass them through uh, pre-trained CNN-based networks like ResNet 101 to produce the extracted features. 
After that, we can add the positional embedding and we pass it through attentive encoder. The attentive encoder is composed of n blocks of hierarchical self-attention and one residual block. And the output of this step can produce the image embedding. After that, we use the image embedding to get, uh, together with the text token to produce uh, um, uh, the, the changed captions in the training phase. Um, mathematically speaking, let's say uh, the input uh, to, to this network is x and x is bitemporal, x1 and x2. They have been captured from the same scene at two different time epochs. We also have a T, uh, the, the, the text tokens. The text token, uh, it starts uh, with the start token and it ends with the end token. And the size of the token is N. And if the uh, text tokens is, uh, uh, the size of the text token is less than N, is fewer than N, we use zero as placeholders. What we want to do here is to train a network F uh, uh, with the inputs X and T, which, uh, and uh, this network is parameterized uh, by theta. And what we want to do here is to produce T hat or the predicted uh, change captions as the outputs. As I said before, um, um, the input uh, to this network is x1 and x2, uh, uh, or, or image1 and image2. And in the feature extractor part, we use as uh, Salmis uh, networks, exactly the same networks to extract features from these two images. And we use a, a, a parameter sharing between these two networks as well. So we use exactly the same network and we use a similar uh, parameters as you can see here, theta fe, uh, and uh, we try to keep everything similar, and with that, uh, hopefully, we can extract features which can highlight the changes between image one and image two. So, in the next couple of slides, I try to, 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 to describe each building block of uh, this work. For example, the hierarchical self-attention, residual block, and the caption decoder. So, uh, after performing, after passing those images, image one and image two, through the CNN based uh, backbone networks, we produce F1 and F2. And uh, when we add uh, the positional embedding to F1 and F2, uh, we can produce F0i, and i is one or two, um, uh, which show the. the, the, the uh, Either they are from uh, image one or image two. Uh, one thing, uh, so, so as I said before, we, here we try to produce the predicted uh, change captions, T hats, and uh, we also have the real uh, text tokens. So the whole network uh, will be uh, trained by minimizing the, the, the cross entropy loss. Uh, between the probability vectors of T hats or the predicted uh, uh, change captions and the real text tokens. In the test phase, we only have uh, images, so, 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 so the predicted uh, uh, change captions will be estimated solely based on input images. Uh, uh, in an autoregressive uh, way. So le let me now uh, uh, discuss the attentive encoder in more detail. In the first stage, uh, let's look at the hierarchical self-attention or HSA block. The HSA block is composed of dual self-attention block or DSA and the joint self-attention block, the JSA, to model the inner and intro uh, 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 semantic representations in a better way. As you can see here, for these uh, DSA and JSA, we use similar networks. And here you can see uh, what's going on mathematically within each uh, hierarchical self-attention block. So, uh, uh, 
As I said before, TSA will be estimated solely for each uh, feature input, i, and i is either 1 or 2, and uh, while JSA is, is estimated uh, based on the concatenation of the outputs from these two DSAs. Here we have two trainable uh, weight matrices, uh, W and WCAT, uh, which uh, try to, to, to uh, linearly map uh, the input features into uh, query key and value matrices. As I said before, we use uh, J, uh, we use N uh, blocks of hierarchical self attention, and J shows the depths of the uh, block. And semicolon here shows the concatenation of different features. The output of HSA will be used as the input uh, for the residual block or rest block. And here you can see the visualization of the residual block. In the first place, we take the output of HSA, uh, um, the n's uh, uh, depths, uh, and, and uh, we use that to, uh, to, to estimate the cosine similarity mask, as you can see here. After that, we concatenate F1N and F2N together, and we add the mask there to produce the fused features. After that, we pass the fused features through several layers of convolutions, 2D convolutions, 1 by 1 uh, conv, 3 by 3 conv, and 1 by 1 conv, 3 convolution layers in total, followed by ReLU uh, activation functions. And we then uh, we can produce F-fuse tilde. We can uh, add uh, F-fuse and F-fuse tilde and perform a linear uh, normalization to produce the image embedding. So here we can see the, the uh, caption decoder and the visualization of the attentive decoder. So in the, uh, what we want to do here is to map the original tokens T, the original text tokens T, to the word embedding E text, and here you can see the sizes. So you, you get the um, uh, input text tokens, you pass it uh, through word embedding to produce E text, and then you add uh, the positional embedding to produce E0 text. And this uh, uh, will be used as the input to mask multi head attention. Mask multi head attention, or MHA, um, um, is based on uh, multi-head attention mechanisms, and H shows the uh, number of heads, and J shows the depths of the uh, block. For example, here, here we have N blocks, and J shows the, the number of blocks. WO is a um, um, trainable weighting matrix which linearly um, uh, maps uh, the output of these concatenations to S, J, text, or the outputs of the mask multi head attention. After that, we, uh, we pass uh, the, the output of this step to cross attention, which is another uh, multi head attention mechanism here. And CA is the function that we use uh, for cross attention. In the cross attention, the query matrix comes from the mask multi head attention, but the uh, key and value matrices come from the image embedding, and in this way, we can combine the text embedding and image embedding together. After that, uh, we perform a feedforward network. So, uh, in order to preserve the most important information of the inputs, we use residual connections. So, we pass the, uh, the, the, the uh, activations uh, from the input to the output by bypassing several intermediate layers, and with that, we would like to preserve uh, the most important information. And uh, in this way, we can also help the network to have uh, an easier time for the training phase because uh, the gradients uh, can flow uh, easily uh, during back propagation when we use residual blocks, residual connections. Uh, after that, we take uh, the output of the final step, uh, we perform a um, 
linear normalization uh, followed by softmax to produce the predicted uh, uh, change captions. The whole network will be penalized uh, by, by minimizing the cross entropy loss between uh, the, the predicted uh, change captions and the input text tokens. Well, in order to, to evaluate the performance of this approach, we use two datasets. Uh, Dubai CC dataset and uh, Levy CC dataset. Well, uh, in the community, when they wanted to do, they develop something specifically for uh, change captioning, they put a CC out of uh, the, the name of the dataset. Well, here you can see some, some representations and the corresponding text descriptions. For example, for the, uh, the Dubai CC dataset, we use 500 tiles. Uh, with the size of 50 by 50, and uh, we used 300 tiles for the training, 50 for validation, and 150 for the test phase. Uh, um, for the uh, Levy CC dataset, we used uh, around uh, 10,000 tiles with the size of 256 by 256, uh, something around 6,800 uh, 6, for training. Uh, more than 1,000 for validation and around 2,000 for testing. Here we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, choose anything at random. And these are benchmark datasets with these particular splits. And here you can see some ablation studies. For example, for the HSA part. And if you remember, uh, the, the positional embedding DSA and JSA are the main uh, building blocks of uh, HSA. So what we want to see here uh, is that whether the use of HSA would be helpful in terms of final accuracies, in terms of these metrics, uh, metrics or not. And uh, if it's helpful, do we really need to use all these composer, components like, like positional embedding, DSA and JSA or not? Here you can also see the number of parameters and inference time, and here you can see a number of metrics that we used. As you can see, the use of uh, HSA is very beneficial in terms of indexes that uh, we put here. And one interesting observation is that when we use positional uh, embedding, we don't really increase the number of parameters, but we can improve the accuracies to a great extent. And here you can see some ablation studies for the residual block and the main components of the residual block is the cosine similarity mass and the residual block itself. And here you can see the number of parameters, inference time, and all the metrics. And as you can see here, when we use the cosine similarity mass and the residual block together, we can improve the results uh, uh, compared to other situations where we don't use this, uh, this, these components or we use only one of those components. Some uh, visual results, X1 shows uh, the first image, X2 shows the uh, second image, and here you can see the uh, image embedding in which uh, um, uh, we can as you can see, uh, the algorithm can localize the changes. And here you can see the captions, the reference caption, and the predicted caption with the algorithm for these two data sets. Here we, we uh, uh, compared our approach with other approaches uh, in the computer vision uh, and, and, and the remote sensing community. And as you can see, our approach could uh, pro produce the best results in terms of accuracies uh, than other approaches. Well, uh, as I said before, here you can find, uh, in this very link, you can find the archive paper and the course will be uploaded uh, on this very, very GitHub page. Well, conclusions. Uh, in this uh, very talk, we covered uh, two examples on image generation from text and uh, change captioning or uh, uh, producing automatic reports from uh, multi-temporal images. But of course, we didn't cover uh, all different uh, topics which can integrate images and text together. 
For, for example, visual question and uh, answering is one of those examples, or image captioning is another example in which we can make the most of text and images at the same time. Uh, we also develop another approach based on a um, uh, tabular or, 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 or um, publicly available censuses. Well, uh, here we don't have text description. All we have are uh, some publicly available censuses or governmental information. And we use these numbers, these uh, tabular information to lead uh, our self-supervised approach in a weekly supervised way to produce results as accurate as fully supervised techniques. Let me make an example here. For example, uh, in this paper, uh, we use publicly available uh, censuses and governmental information for the amount of harvest for different types of crops uh, in Brazil. Uh, so for example, uh, let's imagine that uh, we know uh, we have 35% of harvest for crop A, 15% uh, for, uh, percent for crop B, 45% for crop C, and so on. And we can enforce uh, these uh, class proportions as priors into a self-supervised network, uh, network in a weekly supervised manner to produce accurate results, accurate classification results. And we validated this approach for a wide variety of applications like, like uh, mining, uh, crop monitoring, uh, forest monitoring, and using a variety of image types uh, such as SAR and optical imagery, large-scale SAR and optical imagery. And the paper was published by IEEE Transactions on Geoscience and Remote Sense. Uh, please uh, visit our research activities. Uh, the research activities of our groups at AI4RS.com uh, where we work on a variety of cutting-edge AI for EO, for remote sensing-based applications, and uh, in that particular website, you can also find a variety of data sets that we disclose or a variety of workshops that we organize. And with that, we wanted to, to uh, promote uh, the concept of open science in the remote sensing community. Thank you very much.